Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second edition ever of the Kubernetes Upstream Marketing Meeting. My name is Paris. Today is January 24th, and let's get started. Uh, so we have a good crew of peeps today. Um, what I wanted to start off with was sort of a um, intro to anyone that would like to speak. Uh, I think Jonas, uh, you might be the only new one to this call if you wanted to give a quick intro of yourself. Sure thing. Hi everyone, my name is Jonas Roslin. I'm an open source community manager over at VMware and I've been hanging out with the wonderful folks at Contrabex for quite some time. Happy to be here. Yay. We are so happy to have you. All right. <clears throat> so, um, Jonas, well, I'll get you caught up on like a little TLDR of what happened during the first meeting. Uh, and then we'll also do a little discussion of anybody else's thoughts and what they took away from the last meeting. We had sort of a, a meta meeting, if you will. We wanted to talk about like how we got here, why we got here, um, and then ultimately the creation of uh, mission values and um, a charter. Charter because um, we don't need one, so to speak, because only SIGs need one, but charter because, A, this is a new kind of crew, and I think it would be good to build trust and to, to explicitly tell people what's out of scope and what's in scope. Uh, and it's probably just an all-around good idea. It does not need to be some big elaborate document, but just something very to the point so that it, that it just helps shape us and define us. Um, so we did file an issue for that. Chris... Angel and myself, I don't think Angel's on the line right now, but Chris Angel and myself are taking that on. We could definitely use other people. Um, so if you are on the line right now and still wanna help us out with that charter, that would be great. I did put some time on the agenda today to do uh, a working session at the end. If we, uh, if we run out of discussion topics, we can just kind of start working on that. And then we also talked about uh, focus areas and personas, uh, really where we wanted to hone in based on the problems that we had discussed. Some of the highlights of those problems were like the obvious holes and gaps in communication, like AKA people say, oh, I didn't hear about that thing, and that thing may have been important to them. Uh, also the programs that need support, so things like uh, meet our contributors, the steering committee, public meetings, they need to be, have like rotating things that we're constantly posting to uh, and then we want to tell contributor stories so based on those focus areas i mean based on those problems the focus areas are identified as social uh, internal communications web and um, that's kind of the the three areas that we wanted to start with so questions concerns comments uh either jonas or, or literally anyone else Okay. I dig it. Awesome. So um, anybody that was on the first call, you've now had a week to sort of digest this ambiguity. And <clears throat> now as we start to carve out the charter, uh, oh, and by the way, we do have a label now. It's area slash contributor comms. I don't know if the, I need to check if the PR actually got merged, but that will be our area label. I saw it this morning. I think it did. I'm not oh, sure though. Awesome. Let me check. Uh, so that means we'll have our own label for the team. But yeah, so as we start to flush some of the organization and planning stuff out here, we should start to kick up these focus groups. I mean, not focus groups, I'm sorry, these focus areas. And again, being social internal comms and web. Uh, and right now for internal comms, we have Toonday that's interested. <clears throat> Uh, and then uh, we have a lot of folks who are interested in uh, blogging as well. Blogging uh, would be a little bit of all of that, meaning they would sort of be working across social internal comms and the web uh, because they would be writing about all of those topics. So, uh, and I know all, pretty much all of you said that you were interested in blogging, uh, but and after the call on last week, did anybody want to step up and help shape any of those focus areas? I can help shape social. 
Okay. And I'd like also, to... I can also yeah, add as an to... editor for blogging, obviously. Kim blog. Yeah, my dog wants to join. Uh, I'd say uh, uh, the blog area would be great. Uh, I'm already working with the SIG Docs uh, blog sub project and, uh, and can provide some pointers there and, and kind of look at some of the handbooks and, and help out on that front. Okay, and then Rin blogging and then what anybody else wanted to call out anything that they that spoke to them like right now we still need somebody to like head up internal comms uh, and come up with that strategy and also web so the web would be the contributor site so uh, ultimately like the editor there uh, and seeing that the the rest of it gets built out the rest of it being like cool innovative things that we should put on the contributor site <clears throat> And I think that Angel with Linode said that the Linode folks were super interested in that. Yeah. We'll have to check with them. I'm going to write that down to check, to check in because I know Angel couldn't make it today. <clears throat> check in with Angel re social or re web and Linode. All right. Okay, so I think what we should do now is just work together in small groups. Um, and then what I'll do is for the blogging team, I did find an old issue that I wanted to show you that, was, that actually kind of started that whole idea of we should blog for contributors. And then what we discussed last meeting was having some kind of running issue with blogging ideas and SIGs that we want to interview and things like that. And then the bloggers can just come in and start picking things out from that list until we get sort of schedules of events. Uh, and then you might have to, as a blogger, talk about an event, for instance, like a steering committee election or something like that. But there is an issue right now that I want to show you. So for the bloggers, here is, here it is. And then I'll share my screen. All right. So here's the, here's what I said a while ago. This was like, oh, I've got this really great idea. We should interview SIGs. It's kind of like almost like a journalist, if you will, uh, and like go deep, go do a deep dive into like who they are, how they came to be, um, put like a little human touch on it. And really the goal here, honestly, the goal is to get them help. And it's kind of like a job ad without it being a job ad. Like that's what like employers do for employment branding, right? They like put really good articles about their employer out there on the internet in hopes that people will come work there. Um, so what we can do is I can set an issue for the Kate's blog like this and community and then we can have like a running list of SIGs. So all the bloggers that said that they were interested with that, does that sound like something that would be okay for you to start? And then you would just clip off, um, click off, clip off stories that way to work on. Yeah. Okay, cool. Idea. All right. Let's, let's do that. I mean, cause that's something that we, that I can do quickly. And then at least the folks that are interested in blogging can kind of kick the, kick the ground running while we get some of the other strategy stuff in place, I think. Um, what do you so, all think uh, about that? Um, I was just thinking, <clears throat> I was just thinking if um, it might be a great idea to also uh, list some of the SIGs to start off with. Yeah, yep, that's exactly what I mean. Yep, so we'll list, we'll, we can list um, like some of the SIGs that need the, that need the most help that are the most complex. So like I had uh, that one, I think like scalability is one of those, right? Because there's not yeah. many people in that crew. Uh, the stuff that they work on is not necessarily going to be uh, easily explained in a 20-minute in a 20-minute intro at KubeCon, stuff like that. 
Um, and then what we could do is we can make kind of like a series out of it. So like either, you know, focus on a SIG every two weeks on the blog or something like that. And then we can work with the blog team like Taylor and come up with schedules and, and like, you know, when the blog team should expect contributor content, things like that. And then our audience will know to expect that too during a certain cadence as well. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna take that as an action to get that issue kicking. That issue kicking for bloggers since we have the most bloggers and then folks can list SIGs that we should blog about and topics. All right. Internal comms Tunday. All right. Which which tune day? Tunday. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, which two days said that they were interested in the internal comms? Oh, that was me. Okay, okay. thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I, we do have, I, I love the fact that we have two two days. I it's think great. That's it's, I love it. <laughs> uh, it would have been weird if it was two two days and two Paris's. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So... Any other questions, concerns, or comments so far? All right. Um, let's look, let's work on the charter. All right. So I'm going to open a doc and then share it with you all, and we can start kicking on the charter. And then while I do that, Jonas, was there um, anything that called out to you as far as things that you might be interested in or um, anything that you want to claim to lead? Anything that calls to you? I need to check it uh, again. My laptop crashed, that's why I'm Yeah, on. yeah, no worries. Yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to get everything up and running here. So I'm taking apps again. Uh, All good, no worries. Good. Yeah, I'll come back to you. I'm just kicking up the charter. All right, and then Kubernetes staff. Well, actually, you know what? In the meantime, let's talk about you all too. That's important. Um, you all is teammates. Is everybody here a member of the GitHub org? If you're not, don't, if you're not, that's no worries. Ping on DM, and then what we can do is I can work with you to get you there. All membership is within the organization is uh, a way for us to build trust with you and just say, hey, I'm going to stick around. And yes, like, you know, we're okay with you running our tests uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. So usually it's just a few PRs and that lets us know, oh, okay, they're, they're in it to win it. And then we can go from there. The reason why it's important that this team have it is you will be working with issues and uh, PRs and whether that's in the website repo with the blog or the community repo or the contributor web or the contributor site repo. You're just going to want it eventually because the labels and the bots and things start to become a little bit friendlier um, and you can just do what you need to do uh, a little bit better, like assigning issues and things like that. So that's the first thing. Um, everybody should be getting membership. Um, the second thing is if anybody also knows anybody else that wants to help out, clearly as you can see, we have a ton of work to do. Uh, we still have major holes with internal communications. It's probably not that attractive, so I'm sure that's why most people are like, uh, it doesn't sound very cool. Um, but it is very visible because you would, you know, be out and about and helping us out with all the internal comms. Um, but we also have a huge need, need, a huge need for a G Suite administrator as well. Chris, did you talk to Alex about the G Suite stuff? Uh, no, Alex. I 
I don't know. Alex was doing something else this week. Like I pinged him and he's like, Hey, I'm busy. I'll touch base with you later. It's like, okay. and he never got back. So I'm assuming he was out somewhere. There was something going on in his neck of the woods. So yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, the G suite stuff is probably the lowest priority that we have. Uh, I put it on there in case anybody really wanted it just because this is the way that we can automate. So like if we're looking for, you know, really cool stuff on automation, like we've got a G suite, we've got a bucket there. Uh, we have the contributors at domain. That's like where we should be sending our comms from, things like that. So like, and, and then like somebody would ultimately, ultimately be working on, you know, like a strategy and a process for G Suite and stuff like that. So, all right. And I'm sharing the doc with you all right now. So, uh, Paris, yep. um, reading through the, the doc here again, the uh, schedules of content for internal comms. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, I would like to dive into that piece a little more. Yeah. Uh, the routine campaigns. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this, like, ideally, like, you know, I'm sure you see a VMware, I see it at Google, like, there's these spreadsheets, and, like, it's always, like, a month prior to X event. It's, like you know, yep. uh, get the word out about this thing. Like there's a couple things in the project now that like we know are coming up, like, you know, steering, uh, KubeCon, you know, like that kind of thing. So then it's just like setting off the motions of, okay, I got to post, we got to post this on discuss. Okay. We got to post this here. So that would be awesome. if that's something you can deep dive into for sure. Yeah. Um, where, where do we currently have like a schedule of all those things? Do, do we have that? No, schedule yeah. of events yeah. or schedule of what needs to go out? We have schedule of events, but we, we don't have the have, events. Yeah, we have, but they're only meetings. Yeah. There's right. no events. Yeah, like that's what oh, we're Oh, crap. Maybe okay. you're going to be starting pretty much from scratch. So I would suggest like. CNCF crap. probably has a calendar or something you could copy it. Not for Kubernetes. Like, I don't think they're keeping really? track of our steering. I don't think they're keeping oh. track of our steering, uh, our steering committee and like oh, God. stuff like that. They, they are, they'll they definitely have something for you to go off of probably because they'll have like the cube cons and the forums and like whatever else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the community um, days. But they're not yeah. going to have like anything internal here. Like I'm saying to like the steering committee elections and stuff like that. But no, isn't Amy in charge of running those meetings though? Not steering committee. That's you're thinking of TOC. Oh, that's right. Never mind. My bad. Yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like code of, and then like code of conduct also, like they have um, like they have term limits as well. So like tracking their term limits and like tracking their onboarding, which means like we should probably talk about how we have a new one at that time of the year. Like, hey everybody, we have a new code of conduct committee, that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, Jonas, you, that would be starting fresh and we can crowdsource a lot of that to start with, like just, you know, in Slack, just say, Hey, what, if, like, what events are there? And then we can all just like spout out. And then sharing, this is just a quick doc that I'm starting so that we can get a charter going. And then and then the other meta thing that I wanted us to think about as we start taking roles as well, we haven't really formed outside of like some of the bloggers and I know Chris is going to take social. Um, we haven't just talked about the, our future. So I talked about mine, meaning I'm going to bootstrap this for about three months, maybe four, but I, I plan to like get this going and, and get out. Um, but then you all, so I feel like y'all should have shadows. Um, we should definitely try to build that in once we have some rule books accomplished. Uh, and Chris, if you want, since you already know that you kind of want to start off with social, you should start um, hacking at a rule book as well. And then any same with Tune Day, Tune Day on the line as well, and some other people, uh, Tune Day and Jonas, if you all uh, want to work together on like hacking together what an internal comms rule book would look like. We have uh, one somewhere, right? 
Where's do we have any right now? We have yeah, reference? we have release the the release rule books, the contributor okay. summit rule books. Um, and remember to bootstrap, it does not need to be extensive. It just mm -hmm. needs to give the general gist, and then like we keep building on it. Uh, <clears throat> so charter, I'm thinking just a quick summary of who we are, what we do, quick out of scope and then a quick governance slash how we're formed. So this is like how we make decisions, uh, shadows, um, how do like, how do we get those shadows? All right, so I'll just put like recruiting. Um, and then how do you um, quit, leave, boot, get the boot if you're not doing it? Um, and then out of scope things that I think we should define and please yell, yell these out as well. I definitely want to define that CNCF marketing is out of scope and that end user marketing is out of scope and um, I also want to write something about Coupon. I mean, it's kind of like. It's not our job to promote KubeCon is what you're saying, right? It's not our job to promote KubeCon, but it is our job on the internal comm side to promote that for like the. Like, the, the meeting areas and like yeah. all the SIG meet and greet yeah. type stuff going on. Yes. Which that's going to be hard to actually track too, because a lot of that is like on the fly. So that'll be fun. So like this events right. calendar, Jonas, I feel like is going to be like a critical piece <laughs> to both of you and mine's uh, jobs. So yeah, I can help that. So yeah. What else do we think should be out completely out of scope for this group or out of scope to bootstrap? Um, you said CNCF and end users. Uh, do we need to actually say vendors? I mean, end users, I think classifies vendors, right? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, and then the other thing that we talked about last time was focus and audience to start. Um, to start, we're concentrating on current contributors. And the reason why is we have, remember, 40K plus. And all of them have an issue, and that's what we're trying to solve. Um, the new folks will obviously, the, um, I feel like once we're fully up and loaded, all of our role books are ready, we can probably start tackling some of the potential new contributor issues. But I feel like a lot of those get wrapped into things like the contributor site anyway. Um, but let's definitely focus on current contributors, getting them, uh, getting them well uh, in the know of everything that's going on and telling their story and getting some, some sustainability for them. I think that's the important part. Oh, you know what? We should drop the sustainability word. That's a good one in the summary. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> anything that's out of scope, though? I'm trying to think of specific, like, enabling activities I would do at Red Hat, and I think we've covered them all, right? Like, if somebody were doing XYZ, like a vendor would push this, right? Like, if a project is pushing, hey, we need more contributors, right? Like, we would help them with that. But if a project is pushing, like, a product that's not a project anymore <laughs> so I think that covers it to be honest with you okay um now let's talk about how we should make decisions obviously we're sort of breaking down into focus areas right now and we've got me that's sort of acting as this like bootstrap slash editor slash creative director for right now which will eventually need to be a role as well um, talk to me about how you want to make decisions. 
So, I mean, yes, we have owner's files too. So they would like if you, whatever you're doing. So, I mean, if you're doing the contributor site, you still have to adhere to owner's files. And yes, you probably eventually want to get yourself into that file. Um, but like, for instance, strategies and things like right here with this charter, for instance, should we get everybody in all the team leads to agree on something that major and then move on? How do you want to do things like that? Or for instance, when Chris has done an overt, like kind of a very basic social strategy and social sort of focus and scope, who should approve Chris's social strategy? Huh. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, Shouldn't like the whole group have a, have a say? I mean, I feel like that might play into <clears throat> like what some maybe what Jonas is working on, like what you were saying. Jonas, what do you think? Um, what about think, lazy consensus? Yeah, like lazy consensus is fine, right? Like okay. the current the current way we do things, I think yep. the rest of the community is okay. The yeah. I don't want to have it to be like one person can hold up the whole works just because they're on vacation or something, right? <laughs> like, because yeah. that stinks. Um, yeah. And then you'll also need to have, like, especially in social, though, you'll also need to have sort of a decision tree too for tweets. Mm -hmm. So you should all, we should always have some, and, and, and I don't necessarily mean <clears throat> to when I say decisions, it could be like editorial decisions as well, not necessarily like policy, right? So there's two, I guess, you know what, let me write that down. I'm going to say there's like, there's the policy decision, which is seems pretty decent for like lazy consensus. And then obviously you go through like a standard owner's file process. But what about things like tweets and um, anything else that might need like an, uh, a second eyeball or from this group? Anything like that? Go ahead, Jonas. Yeah, I think the, the the one owning Twitter. If we have two people owning Twitter, they they are trusted enough to do that to do so. Okay, so yeah, leads, I mean, I would leads make call uh make, leads make uh, calls on smaller uh, editorial and transactional. Yeah, I think like the modus operandi right now until there's like an actual like good book in place is going to be, uh, hey, is this team at the very least cool with it? I will probably just mention it in the SIG Contrib X channel in general and get feedback from the entire yep. like, you know, and then build out the editorial stuff from there, to be honest with you. So the style guide comes into play, but how a decision to make a tweet goes out, I don't think we want to make that super complex. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then we also, what, how did we call it? What did we say this last, I think Chris, you might remember. What did we say last time that we should have? It wasn't values because we as a project have values and principles. It was kind of like a subset additional. Mm. And one of them as an example was like, I will not, it, as a, as a marketing team contributor, I will not, you know, write about my work as, like, for what instance. We call it ethos? I, uh, yeah, like an ethos. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Something, yes, something. Yes, because that's, the, that's kind of where I'm trying to build trust, too, with some of the other contributors. Because some of the other contributors, when they hear marketing team, they're like, oh, oh my God. Or does this is this sounds like vendors are going to talk about vendors and like mm -hmm. like that kind of thing? So I'm wondering, it's almost like an ethos. That's a, that's actually really good. Um, of like stuff we care about. I think we we may we might have called it vision in the past because I had yeah, yeah, vision yeah, yeah. slash ethos yeah. or ethos service and facilitators is what I wrote down last time. Yes. Um. So in the case where you know if you're a blogger and um, you know, you're looking on the SIG list and you see, you know, I don't know, this is just a, a me example. You know, I see in this case, scalability, you know, scalability is a lot of Googlers. In that case, I might want to like say, Hey, Rin, you're not a Googler. You should probably take this SIG. So it doesn't look like I'm talking about, you know, my employer and stuff like that. So that kind of thing. Jonas. 
you know, it, it's easy to kind of copy from the, the CNCF TOC um, yeah. board there. Uh, members okay. of this council uh, or, or this, this part of the yes. project are expected to act in the interest of the project and not yes. their members. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, is the word for that, like, I'm sorry, is the word for that called identification? Is that what it is? I have to look it up. There's like a one word phrase for it, to be honest with you. I, I'm not sure if we want to put that in there, but I 100% want to just copy and paste TOC stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I put that in there as a as a thing to, to get. All right. And then is there anything else that we think would build trust with the community if we called it out in that kind of ethos or vision? What was the other one? Hold on, let me look back at the... There is one oh, more. Sorry, what was the question? I was looking at um, anything else that we should call out as a part of our ethos. Like again, because we already have values and principles as the project, and of course we can link, we can link to those. Let me write actually write that down. Yeah, like link to the to the values and principles of project already. Uphold those in a less political way mm -hmm. uh, I, I can help with that uh the the two things i wrote down paris or everyone are uh a service to the community and facilitators for the community right so yes, yes. i think that if that's not identified already we probably just write that in there right like yes, we, yes. we kind of exist only with the community helping us yes uh yes. and facility you know we facilitate otherwise um cool all right and then we already have a quick summary of what we do that i can get that i think we've got a little bit of a framework going and i think this is really all we need summary ethos slash vision where we're focusing and why at what's out of scope power formed which is Roles, shadows, recruiting, also decision. I'm just going to reorder those. Uh, and then decisions, how we make decisions. So like policies, lazy consensus, uh, leads may call on smaller editorial and transactional, like example, Twitter. Uh, and then we need to figure out later on, not necessarily now, but you know, if you quit, what do you do? Do you like hire someone else? Does your shadow get it? What do you do? Uh, you want you know, you know, if you leave and then what if like you're not active, how do we boot you out? Do we want to talk about that now or later? Um, we can talk about it now, especially if you have ideas, please spit them out. I mean, I'm all for right. Like establishing like guidelines into like how to like exit something. Um, and that's, I mean, it, I don't get, like, if we need to establish guidelines, I'm like, okay, this person really isn't doing their job anymore. Like, we can address that later. But, like, if someone wants to leave, we need to have some exit ramp because I don't want people to feel trapped. Yeah. Um, so, I know there's ways to do it now. Is there an emeritus status and then the shadow promote? Is that what we normally do? Or how does that, someone elect somebody else, right? Yeah. I mean, right now in other areas, depending on like the time of how long the shadow has been there, they would probably either give it to the shadow uh -huh. or another lead would, another lead that's been there would assume the role until they figured it out. Um, so we could have like a layered option. Okay. Yep. Let's do, if there's a shadow available, if a sufficiently trained shadow is available, they can take the spot until, you know, deemed official, I guess. Uh um, one more uh, suggestion is like uh, there are a lot of uh, CSI uh, repositories which is actually kind of being archived because they don't have any um, um, maintainers or uh, leaders like the uh, project owners. Oh, so yeah. uh, probably we should what we should also suggest is like if um, a lead is the, uh, running a project and there is no shadow then they might find a shadow they, sh they must find a shadow so that uh, if there is an, an unfortunate situation the shadow can be like even with minimal experience we can still continue to run the project or something like that yeah we should just build the shadow in though like from the from the jump Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, yeah. That should be a, a responsibility of the leader or the um, uh, owner of the project. So we should actually make sure that is happening across the projects, across the repositories. 
for sure. Like, I feel like at the end of this three month period, um, at the end of this three month period for this marketing team, I feel like we should have all the leads identified. You should have your basic role books in, you should have that, uh, probably, or sh we should probably have shadows in place as well. Um, have a basic charter up and have probably like the next three months worth of work that you know you're doing. I feel like that's where, that's kind of the, the goals that I have for the crew. Do you feel like that's all good goals? Sorry, when was the date for that? End of the like, month? So three months. No, in three oh. months. Oh, so, okay. yeah, yeah. Like end of, by the end of March. So then when you all go to KubeCon Amsterdam, you can say, hey, I'm doing this thing now. Y'all should check it out. All right. So Chris, uh, I think you and I are on the hook to shape up this charter. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody else wants to help, obviously be our guest. Um, we'll get the charter checked in. We do have a marketing team folder in the community repo. So anything that you have that you're doing for your roles uh, or anything like that, you'll put the role books in there. Um, like any of your like future best practices stuff, like for instance, social will probably have a folder. I'm sure internal comms might have a folder, like maybe for, I don't know, whatever, like, um, feel free to use that. And I feel like we're doing okay organiza organizationally right now. Um, let's get a good vision statement too. We'll do like a little lazy consensus on a vision statement so that we can have a little bit of a North star as well. Um, so that everybody can work towards that goal. Uh, and then I guess what we should do too for takeaways after this call is start to work in our smaller crews. So, um, maybe, uh, to start me Tune day and Jonas, Jonas will, either get on a Slack DM or we can get on a call. It doesn't matter. We can talk uh, and we'll kick up what like next steps are for the internal team. Uh, and then Chris and me, and I forgot somebody else, Angel, I think Angel. it was offered to do the social. So let's kick that off next week as well so that we can get some things going there. Like the, the key thing is obviously getting a handle and Bob's been sitting on like, I think like 10 options. Mm. Um, so we should like, you know, start, shortlisting that and maybe doing like a community vote. Um, and then we need a web team. So that's, I'm going to go on the hunt for a web team right now. Uh, like, I'm, I'm going to talk to the Linode folks. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just pinged Alex. He's out still. So the, like, I feel like initially I, I can help with it, but I don't want to like be the lead on it. If that makes sense. All right. Yeah. 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 And Tune Day, what you can do on the internal team too uh, is help out with the, um, the program advertising as well and figuring that out too. Um, also, oh yes, the contributor experience survey. This is very key for marketing folks uh -huh. um, because I would say half of that is relevant to this crew right now. Um, if you weren't on the deep dive yesterday, we're going to do another deep dive, but this time it will have better data. Um, the data that we did yesterday was just the face value, what, you know, question one, two, three, four from SurveyMonkey, but we're going to have uh, a, some data scientists do some uh, pretty pivot chart, pretty, pretty pivot charts for the most part. <laughs> pretty pivot <laughs> charts. <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. Uh, but one of the things on there was obviously communication channels where people are reading. That's, that's going to go into probably uh, like where we advertise, why we advertise there. Um, the good news is that, oh no, are you there? I just yeah. got popped up. Oh wow, weird. It said I was about weird. to get off of Zoom and then oh. it didn't. Anyway, that was weird. Yeah, we're here. And like, I just got this like violent thing from Zoom that was like, you're getting kicked off. And I'm like, what? Anyway, um, that was really jarring. Um, shit, now I forgot what I was talking about. Um, what was uh, I saying? Social uh, words. Words. Oh, hey, it's George. Hey. Maybe that's what your kickoff thing was for. Oh, that's what it was. 
That's what it was, George. I used if, we're getting, if we're getting to the assignment section, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> oh, darn it. You joined just in time. Come on. Come on, George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Linode. Yeah, the Linode folks. Mm -hmm. so yeah, no. Linode? Oh. No, the, the Linode folks were on the last call, um, and mm. they said that they wanted to help out with a bunch of stuff that we were doing here, namely social and website stuff. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, they said they wanted to, to donate some of their time and start contributing to this. So I was like, what? Hey. George, you want to shadow me on social media? <gasps> yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Damn but it. I will help you find new people. I actually, I, yeah, like I don't even know who I should ask at this point. So I'll ping you later. Yeah. So I, I, I actually came to this meeting to ask for help. So can cool. you add me to the very end of the agenda? I didn't know how long you were meeting or whatever. We're, we're, we're pretty much at the end right now. So oh, it's okay. So I have a spreadsheet here. So, you know, I've been doing the office hours things for a while. And for some reason, this new year, it's just been new people everywhere. I don't know if like people had a great yeah. KubeCon, but I'm overwhelmed with actually new people. This spreadsheet used to have me, Mario, Bob, and Jeff on it, and that was it. Everything below Joel Speed and, and on the first column, and the entire Western edition, except for Josh, is like all brand new people. Um, some of you seen before, some of you haven't. However, what I need your help with is, um, Historically at office hours, we've done a absolutely horrible job when it comes to diversity, gender, all of them, all of them. Um, so that's actually starting to turn around. Um, the kind of problem I painted myself into a corner is uh, Taylor who works at VMware did a really good job trying to find people who work at VMware who are looking to contribute. Um, so now I have way too many VMware folks that I'm gonna have to rotate out. So I was wondering if, um, we can get the word out maybe to other, I, so I don't know how to do this, right? Normally you'd be in Contribax to be like, hey, I need volunteers. I don't really know how to ask for like, hey, I need volunteers. I have a lot of people who work for me who are like really helping out and that's great. But like, I really want to ensure that the diversity of the show also, you know what I mean? Also has um, people from small companies, from big companies, people who are in no companies at all. I really don't want to get down to like having to track people's affiliations because that gets a little, you know? Yeah. So, so I much. think I, I just wanted to put out kind of like an unofficial, hey, if you see people around kind of thing, send them my way. We'll figure out a rotational thing so there's not too many of one company in one show or whatever. Um, I never had this problem until 2020. So something has happened. People, I, it feels to me like people are more aware now and now I'm kind of overwhelmed, which I don't know. I wasn't bad. Yeah, I was so like, what do you need? You need social media, you need internal emails, um, you need... So, so, so I was thinking more for existing contributors because okay, so, this is for yeah. people that are actually on the panel. So they have to know Kubernetes because what I do is I read, I read stuff and then the panel answers. Uh, I think what I'm going to do for February, we only do it once a month, so I got plenty of time to prepare, is I'm going to have the existing folks on but muted just in the background and let the new people speak more, introduce them, get a few shows under their belt, make them feel comfortable, that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, mostly like, I'll just tell you how I pitch this internally, if this might help, you know, at other places or whatever. There's always people who are like um, on the road or whatever doing Kubernetes for customers and they don't really have a chance to participate upstream. This is only like, hey, sign me up. If I'm around, I'll do it. If not, I don't. So it might be a, a place for like SRE style folks to, to maybe give back with a little bit of their expertise. Um, Have you advertised on the CNCF Slack? So I haven't quite gotten there yet. I just, I was literally in the spreadsheet this morning and then I saw that this meeting was happening and I was just like, <laughs> why don't I just ask? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. I mean, so yeah, CNCF Slack would be a good place. I mean, yeah. let's, uh, I mean, I think the ambassadors channel. It, yeah, you know. like I feel like that's an ambassadors thing to an extent, yeah. man. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. I, I mean, I could reach out within Red Hat, you know, just say, hey, if you're an SA, SRE, whatever, you want to join these office hours, like we could do it that way too, right? Like, yeah. just grab yeah. grab a company and blast out. But yeah, can you send an email to Cheryl with the end user committee and get her to blast an email to those folks? That's a good idea. What's the address? What committee is that? Sorry, is yeah, that the end, end user it's, it's an, well, I think it's an end user community. I've been end calling it a committee too, and someone just like slapped my hand yesterday. Uh, 
It's Ooh. committee, community, groups, things, working groups, sub projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the end users, I think, is a good, um, good one yeah. to yeah. talk to there. So I've actually run into this problem before. How do I find their mailing list? Like Absolutely. I find their page all the time where it's like, hey, it's That's why I would just email Cheryl direct and yeah. say, hey, hey, this is what I need to send out. Yeah. Just draft it up and send it. Exactly. Like, hey, could you send this for me? And yeah. tell them where to get, tell them where to reach you. Yeah. Also, which Cheryl, we, which Cheryl are we talking about? Uh, uh, Hung. Hung. Right, the Cheryl. Okay, got it. Yep. So hold on, Cheryl Hung for panelists. Because I think ideally, while, while it is cool that we have like Kate's core contributors that do this, having like end users like the banks and whatnot having their, yeah. I think would be cool, right? Because like the people asking the questions are people that are, you know, obviously they're going to go to a program. They're like, obviously VMware and Red Hat are going to be here, right? But if it's an end user who's like, yeah, I'm just a person that deploys this at work, you know, it kind of gives them a little different perspective on that, on that kind of thing. So, yeah, I would I would definitely go that route then. That's I yeah, think that's your first, that's your first route. I will, yeah, I will do that. And then I think there might even be like, is there an really maybe an end user Slack and in, in CNCF as well? There's a, probably a couple of like not even necessarily ambassador channels that might work as well. Yeah, Let me look. I'm yeah. There. Let me and if we end up with too many people, it's not. Yeah, like your rotation grows. It's not a bad thing. Yeah, and we could always have more episodes. You know. We could do it twice a month. We could do it three times a month. Now that I don't have to do the community meeting, a lot of shit frees up. So I don't know. <laughs> so, oh no, you know what? Two, the other Tune Day is not on. I just because I was going to say Tune Day and Jonas. So this would be another yeah. good use case for programs that need to just have regular, consistent love and emails, like on a, from a campaign perspective. So, like identifying all those programs and, um, and then getting them on like a routine cadence. I did update the communication MD file with like every channel known to human existence for Kubernetes contributors. So mm. I know it's like, like scroll worthy there. There's a financial services user group Slack, F-S-U-G. That sounds awesome. awesome. You should probably go into there. Uh, how, what would a financial services office hours look like? like? I have a question. I have an answer. I can't tell you. Well, and that's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> uh, these people are going to have to like, like we're going to have to work with these people because I've done consulting yeah. work for banks before and I can't talk about it. And like, yeah. like, I mean, even like copying and pasting, like something like accidentally has gotten me in trouble before. Right. Mm. Like, so yeah, like the, you're going to have to like cast a wide net is what I'm trying to get at because there's going to be like a handful of really smart people that are mm. in those banks. And like, I could reach out to a couple of them if you want, but I know uh, that I don't know if they'd help help though. They're like super smart, like yep. eggheads, and not just on Kubernetes stuff. I'm in the middle of PRing the host instructions as well. That's stuff like tweet in this channel, blah, blah, blah. Should I add steps like contact the Contribex marketing team kind of thing? No, not yet. Oh, oh okay. my god! That's why I'm asking. Hey, look. I know. <laughs> well, like, I like. I like. Honestly, I was like, I half tuned you out too, and all of a yeah, sudden, okay. I heard contact us. So I was like, not yet. <laughs> okay, all right. Because I have, I have, I actually started writing a checklist of here's how you run an office hours, and then they have yep. to, you know, seven days before tweet this exact thing to this people, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, That's okay. awesome. I did something similar to that too. So like, no, you're getting it. What we're doing is like getting a, we're finishing up a charter really quick, trying to get the role settled, get everybody's expectations on the line, get everybody on the same page, give us like three weeks off for that. And then we'll start taking stuff. Um, so. Do, can I ask you yeah. random questions? So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you, have y'all asked, I swear to God, this is not a troll, but have you asked CNCF if we can like have control of the Twitter account and stuff yet? Or is that still a non? I can ask. 